For the C8 generation of the Chevy Corvette, they made one of the largest fundamental changes to the vehicle that you can possibly make. They made the steering wheel square. Just kidding. They moved the engine to the back. As you all know, the C8 Stingray is now mid-engine. So why did they do this? They had kind of been hitting the maximum potential of the front engine rear wheel drive platform. If you drive a Z06 or a ZR1 from the C7 generation, they are quite a handful. The tires are constantly fighting for grip. By moving the engine to the back, you completely change the physics of the car. It's intrinsically a little better balanced. And with that big engine back there, it actually launches really hard too. This thing will do 60 in under three seconds as equipped with the Z51 package. From a design standpoint, the C8 looks seriously exotic. You are absolutely gonna have people mistaking this for some sort of Ferrari or other Italian exotic. Moving the engine from the front to the back completely changes the shape of it. It looks wider, lower, meaner, very angular in the front. Uh, we've got some touches that kind of tie it into Corvettes, but it's a completely different take on it. The side profile is gonna be completely unlike any Corvette ever made. We have these intake blades on the side on this car with the silver, it's got nice black contrast to it. This car also has a Z51 package, so it's got a few cosmetic touches that indicate that it's the performance version of the car. Around the back, it's a little more squared off Looking. You've got the squared quad exhaust tips uh, and also the tail lights. I think from the front, it's absolutely amazing. From the back, it looks pretty good. Some people were also upset by the fact it doesn't have central exit exhaust. That's due to some of the packaging constraints. But uh, overall, the C8 Stingray has taken a big step up, making it a more premium, much more exotic looking sports car. The engine in the C8 Stingray is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, codenamed LT2. It's derived from the LT1 found in the C7 Stingray. They did change many things to move the engine from the front to the back. Some of them include a redesigned exhaust system, has a taller intake manifold to bring in a little bit more air, also has a dry sump lubrication system that is designed to handle up to 1.25 Gs in any direction. In the C8 Stingray, this LT2 makes 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque with the Z51 package. That is a lot of power for just the entry-level C8 Stingray. Additionally, it has a eight-speed dual clutch transmission designed specifically for this vehicle, rear wheel drive only, and you cannot get a manual transmission for this car. Like I mentioned earlier, the performance stats are quite impressive and we're gonna get to experience it. Zero to 60, under three seconds, top speed, over 190 miles an hour. And it's all because of this NA 6.2 liter V8. Remember when Corvette interiors were really cheap and filled with plastic? Well, the C8 generation is definitely more than made up for all the poor interiors on previous generations. It's extremely impressive in here. The materials are very nice. Now we're in a higher option one. It's got this very cool blue leather with the blue stitching. It seemed to polarize people on the internet. I posted a picture of it. Some people were like, wow, that's so cool. Some people were like, why is there so much blue? I think it looks really nice, especially on a silver car. Brings out some exciting accents to it. Other highlights of the interior, these metal paddle shifters, really nice, they feel amazing, great responses. Um, some less so than highlights some different interesting things. We've got a square-ish steering wheel, and the reason for that is you have better um, clearance on the lower side for your legs, and on the top side, it helps for visibility out the front of it, and I can say it definitely does help that. It's just a very different design thing. You've got the great wall of buttons separating you from the passenger, so the passenger pretty much just sits there and doesn't do anything, because they can't see the screen that's angled, the eight inch infotainment screen that's angled towards the driver, the buttons, the drive modes, the cup holders are even divided from the the passenger. So this is the HVAC system, which we share with the passenger. But when you're sitting over there, you really feel like this is a driver-centric car. So this is the seat you want to be in. Other comments on the interior, space and visibility is pretty good. Now these are the more aggressive seats and as a larger six foot three individual, um, it's a little bit on the snug side. So there's a GT1, GT2, and then the comp seats for various levels of comfort and racy sporting holding you in type of thing. Panel up here, This uh, the top comes off, you can store it in the trunk. Got some very nice stitching on it too. And then, I think the first thing I noticed, as soon as I sat down in this thing, we're pulling out, I was like, wow, it feels seriously exotic. Even before you get going, by moving the engine from the front to the back, you completely change the way the cabin feels, the visibility and the way looking out, and it feels like a serious supercar now. So how does 
the C8 drive. Well, quite impressive actually. Moving the engine to the back does really nice things for your weight balance, your handling, and your straight line performance too, because you have a little bit more weight on the back, which gives you more grip with the rear wheels. Every time I drove a C7 Z06 or anything like that, I just constantly fighting for traction. And while that is fun, if you want to have a well handling car that's enjoyable to drive and actually puts the power down, the mid engine platform is the way to go. This eight speed dual clutch transmission specifically designed for this car is really impressive too. Really fast downshifts. I'm in full manual mode right now in sport and it rips off downshifts and upshifts very nicely. So let's talk a little bit about how this engine feels. 495 horsepower with the Z51 package. It's quite strong, naturally aspirated. It does not rev exceedingly high. Red line looks like it's at 6,500 RPM. So it's not a cra crazy high revving flat plane crank uh, Ferrari V8 or something like that. But the power you get is great. And remember, this is the entry level Stingray version. There will be higher performance versions, possibly forced induction, possibly hybridization, who knows? I'm sure the Z06 601 versions will be quite impressive. This car also has the Z51 package, which brings some of the upgrades to get your max performance you can get out of this car. Magnetic ride dampers are also on this thing, so it rides pretty comfortably. We were in town earlier in traffic with tour mode and just kind of cruising along nicely. And then now on these amazing back roads outside of Las Vegas in the Valley of Fire, you put it into track mode, or actually no, sport mode. Track mode is for tomorrow and just go and it's amazing. <laughs> Listen to those downshifts. about the value of this car this is a very high option example of the c8 stingray there was actually another one out here today that was literally the base one the 59 995 60 thousand dollar car with like nothing on it this thing has 3lt all the uh, z51 things and some of the other options you can get so the sticker on this is over eighty thousand dollars i think it was right around 83 grand that still represents an insane value. This is without a doubt, I think the best sports car you can buy a hundred grand. New without a, I mean, look at the, all the competition. You've got BMW M4, you have uh, Audi RS5, maybe a C63 AMG for this kind of money. Those, yes, are more practical, but from a driving perspective, I would take this. Oh, this is actually much more fun to drive and it definitely looks much more exotic. And now the interior and the technology and your luxury features are just as good. If we look at the used market, there are some really compelling options out there. Think about the R8 that I had. It was a manual V10 R8 Spider. Uh, you can get a Cayman GT4, maybe an AMG GTS. Yes, there are those higher performance variants of other cars that have come down in value, but they're older. They're used. They don't have a warranty. They do not have the new tech on this thing. I mean, you've got performance data recorder. You have the giant digital screen that's reconfigurable. Nice heads-up display. Eight-inch center touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got a digital camera for the rear view mirror so you can really see out even of the big 6.2 V8 back there. This is latest cutting edge technology and it has to performance to back it. So I think without a single doubt, the C8 Stingray is the best sports car you can buy for under $100,000. I am unbelievably excited to see the high performance versions of it. I am extremely excited to get this on the track and see how that drives tomorrow. We'll try launch control. We'll try the dual paddle pullback clutch kick launch type of thing. But cruising along today, the CHD rig has ex impressed me beyond what I expected. Going mid-engine, I think, was an excellent choice pushing for it. It'll expand the, the kinds of people who want to buy this car. Uh, it looks amazing. The material quality is great. It's fast. It's been a ton of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for that track video, too. Thanks for watching.